Moving on to example B, again, we need to put this in augmented matrix form. So we're going to start by putting the coefficients of our variables. Like so. Now again, we have a 1 here, so we're good on that row. In the second row, we need to get rid of the 2, so we need to multiply the top row by negative 2. So negative 2 row 1 plus row 2. So 1, negative 2, 1, and 8. So negative 2 times 1 is 0. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 minus 3 is a negative 5. Negative 2 times 8 is negative 16. Minus 9 is a negative 25. Now, to get rid of the 3 in the bottom row, we take 3 times row 1 plus row 3. 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 3 is 0. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 times 8 is 24 plus 5 is 29. So what we do from there, we can go a couple different directions. We could add row 2 plus row 3. So let's do that. So our third row, 5 plus negative 5 is 0. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. Negative 25 plus 29 is 4. Now, in the second row, we can take one-fifth of row 2 or divide everything by 5 in row 2, which means I'll have a 0, a 1, a negative 1, and a positive, no, correction, a negative 5. What we can do then from here, we have x minus 2y plus z equals 8 y minus z equals negative 5, and z is equal to 4 from the three different rows. So because z is equal to 4, y minus 4 is equal to negative 5, which means y will be negative 1. Since y is negative 1, z is 4, x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 4 equals 8, x plus 2 plus 4 equals 8, which means x will equal 2. So that means your answer will be 2, negative 1, 4. Now we can keep going here. This is a form called reduced row echelon form. Now, if we continue to apply elementary row operations to a row echelon form of a matrix, we can obtain a matrix in which every column that has a leading one has zeros everywhere else. This is the reduced row echelon form of the matrix. It's usually easier to read the solution from the reduced row echelon form. You don't have to do any equation solving once you put in reduced row echelon form. Now, I'm going to show you how to do reduced row echelon form right here. I'm going to move these, because we really don't need these too much anymore, except to check our answer at the end. Let's move these down a little bit. Now, to do this, which means we need to get a 0 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. So the way we do that, we're going to take our top row, that's the row we're going to change. We're going to multiply our second row by 2 and add that to row 1. So we'll have in the middle row, well, yeah, in the middle row we'll have a 0, a 1, a negative 1, and a negative 5. In the top row, 0 times 2 is 0, plus 1 is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, plus negative 2 is 0. 
2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is a negative 1. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Plus 8 is negative 2. Now again, we're still going to have the 0, 0, 1, 4 for our third row. Now we need to make those other two numbers 0. So the easy way to do that, I can take, that's not the row I want to change. I want to change the second row. I can take row 3 plus row 2, and I can make that, keep the third row 0, 0, 1, 4. 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 1 plus, or 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. Now I can do the same thing with the top row, or the first row. Row 3 plus row 1. Well, 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 4 plus negative 2 is 2. This is reduced row echelon form. From this statement, we can see that x equals 2, y equals negative 1, z equals 4. It does take a little extra time to do, but it does get you to your answer right away. In your homework, there are some cases where you have to put the equation in reduced row echelon form, and I do not want you to use your calculator to do it. 